Hey folks, welcome to Moonshift Audio. In this week's video, I'm going to show you how with a bit of effects processing and some use of modulation and macro controls, you can really add some emotion and feeling to a lead sound. The sound itself is pretty simple, but adding a few little touches like this can really bring any sound to life. Here's what this one sounds like. Before we get stuck in, I'm just going to introduce myself quickly. My name's Jack. I'm a producer and mix engineer based in the UK. If you're working on your mixing, you might be interested in my Mix Exploder service where I give you a track a professional mix here in the studio, and then I'll teach you exactly what you need to do to get your own mixes to the same standard using your own track as a reference. I'll put a link to the Mix Exploder down below. Otherwise, if you're interested in working with me as a producer or you'd like a bit of support with one of the own tracks, you can get in touch through my website, moonshiftaudio.com. But for now, let's jump into Serum and take a look at this lead sound. Okay, so here we are in Cubase and I'll just quickly play you the loop that I've made for the backing of this. It's just a basic kick drum pattern and a loop that I got off of Splice and a Reese space and a nice pad that I found on Analog Lab and it sounds like this. So I'm kind of going for that sort of deep, slightly dark kind of tech housey vibe on this one. Nothing too crazy going on there. So we're going to get straight into this saw lead. Now I've drawn in a pattern here, really, really simple. It's kind of like 16th style triplets that reset at the end of every second bar. And that sounds like this. Okay, so we definitely need to do some work on this serum patch. And to start with, we're going to get the oscillators going. So I'm going to drop this first oscillator by an octave, turn on the second oscillator. These basic saw waves are all we need. The actual oscillators on this are really, really simple. We're going to leave this one where it is octave wise, and we're going to put it up seven semitones. So we've got that nice interval. It's actually an octave and a seventh. We're going to load in the sub oscillator. We'll put that on a square and we'll drop that a couple of octaves. So now we're starting to get that's our basic kind of tone together. We're not going to use any unison or anything like that. It's kind of like it's quite ravey, trancey almost. We're going to want to filter. 12 dB an octave is absolutely fine for this. We'll pull the cutoff like reasonably low. I think that's actually where it starts. 52 hertz, something like that. Make sure this acting on both oscillators and the sub oscillator. Okay, so that's kind of disappeared now, but we're going to get a nice bit of an envelope modulating that to give it a sort of twang. So we'll jump in here and we're going to make sure this is modulating that. About 35, 36 is probably about right. And We'll have the attack instant and we won't use a hold at all on this. Decay is going to be pretty snappy, I reckon, like about 65 milliseconds, something like that. And the sustain about 5%, something like that. Six will be fine. Let's try that. So that's starting to get quite plucky now. We're just going to have a quick look at envelope one. The attack and the hold again will be zero. Decay just slightly less than a second, I think. This will become more important when we start to open up that filter a bit later on. Sustain, about just 5.5 dB or so below the maximum, and we can leave the release where it is. Back to the filter. I'm just going to give this a little bit more resonance. Some drive, about halfway is, sounds good, I reckon. And some fat. And now we've got this. So 
It's starting to get there, but it obviously needs to be brightened up a reasonable amount. It needs to be a bit more open and a lot more varied. So the first thing that I was playing around with here was making some of these notes a bit more staccato, a bit shorter. I'm just going to open the cut off a bit so that we can hear this better. And we can look at moving some of these notes around a little bit, particularly moving them late. Yeah, so I can just start to slide these back a little bit off the beat. Not all of them, perhaps. Let's just see how we get on with that. Come over here just so you don't have to watch me do it i've done it to the entire sequence of notes and you can see just nudging them a lot of the time slightly later than the grid how varied you want to go is up to you you know I, I think it's possible to go too loose with this but it depends a lot on the feel that you're going for the vibe but I definitely do recommend spending a little bit of time to do this because it just adds some character and a bit of sort of vulnerability to the sound. The next thing I want to do to add a bit of kind of emotion and depth to this is to start playing around a little bit with the velocities. So if we come into the matrix and we use the velocity as a source and we're going to put this to some of the parameters on envelope two, we're going to do the sustain by about 28 and also the decay by a similar amount and what that means is we'll get a bit more intensity if I play the note harder perhaps pull the cut off down a bit now just means we've got a bit of expression we're not directly affecting the filter cut off but this idea of like modulating an envelope you can see these controls just gives us a nice bit of expression when we're programming it. So if we have a look here, so with those changes in velocity affecting that envelope, and the slightly wonky timing on these notes. We're starting to get a really nice bit of emotion. A bit of humanity, a bit of feeling into this part. So the final step with the programming of the patch is to make ourselves a macro. I'm gonna label this as intensity. We're gonna do quite a lot with this. So we come onto this macro, we're gonna drag it onto the filter cutoff. And we're going to have it affect the filter by about 40. We're going to make it increase the drive all the way. We're going to have it affect the decay and the sustain as well by about 18 each. And we'll do the release as well. Let's play our sequence of notes. Master down a little bit. Just a nice way of getting a lot of control into one macro that we can now modulate. So I've got a slightly wider loop now, and you can see here I've programmed in some automation, which is just on that macro. So we can have this kind of slow build to these crescendos at the end of every four bars. But we've got the modulation note to note coming from the velocity. And it's this kind of like layers of interplaying modulation 
on the different parameters like that envelope and the filter mostly in this case and a bit of drive there that really helped to give this kind of like tension build release and that emotion to the track and we can bring that out even more with some effects and for this i wanted to use some effects outside of serum so i'm just going to go through the chain i've got a compressor here with a reasonably slow attack and what that's doing it's just helping to bring out the pluck at the start of those notes a little bit that slow release helps to let the transient through next up we've got a radiator just driving that pretty hard you can go too hard but it does i do love the radiator on sort of mid-range synth i think it sounds just fantastic got a pro q3 where i'm just scooping out a little bit of the low end and putting a little bit of presence and some treble back into this then into an rc20 where i'm getting a little bit of a wobble not too much you can hear you can definitely overdo it a bit more distortion and a bit of sort of wow and flutter it's starting to sound really analog and quite raw now and then i actually went even further and put some even more saturation on now it's getting quite loud at this point so i didn't drive this very hard see that's just on the edge of lighting up maybe pull the fader down a bit So the last thing I want to do with this is to get some send effects going on. So I've got a delay set up here, which is literally just the default instance of Echo Boy, except I've put the mix on full. And if we start to send this to the delay, we'll hear this. I've actually got a kickstart ducking this delay to the beat. I turn that off. And what we can do with this delay is actually add some automation to the amount that we're sending to it. So that when we get to these crescendos every four bars, we're going to get even more sent to that delay. Get that nice kind of tail coming off. And I've also got a reverb. Not sending much here. But we can pull the same trick. Actually, just copy this automation down to here. Probably a bit too much reverb there. I'm just going to pull that down. And I'll add a kickstart to that. Turn back on the one for the delay. So now we've got these effects, the actual lead sound itself is left unaffected, but the volume of those send effects, the delay and the reverb, is being ducked to the beat, which I'll now bring back in.
And there you have it. A really nice bit of modulation and automation to bring some real emotion and feeling out of quite a simple saw lead. That's it for this week. Please do like and subscribe for more tips, tricks, resources and downloads from me at Moonshift Audio. Till next time.